Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Welcome to Trial and Error, where I play the first part of a game or a game demo. I usually do that pretty badly and give you my thoughts along the way. This time I'm taking a look at Prey. Now, I've uh, been very curious about this game because it's been getting a lot of comparisons to System Shock, which I'm not really familiar with, but I am familiar with Bioshock. Uh, those games introduced me to a whole world of action games I didn't know I would be able to play without sucking horribly at, at least on the easy difficulty. Uh, so I love kind of first-person story-based shooters, if you will, or, or first-person story-based action games. Um, and so I'm hoping that Prey will be enough like Bioshock that I'll be able to enjoy it. The one thing that I'm kind of concerned about, despite loving the sci-fi genre and loving the weird, freaky alien movie genre, is I don't like playing scary games. They just stress me out, um, which is all the more noticeable when I have headphones on because it's really super present. It's just not the way I like to spend my leisure time, is like, you know, being all tensed up. So I'm hoping that this game, this experience, will be maybe like Bioshock in that it has some creepy atmosphere, but it is not like <laughs> pants weddingly terrifying for me, so that it's something that I can actually want to play uh, to unwind at the, at the end of the day. So, all right, well, let's see what Prey has in store for me. Oh, good, there is difficulty settings, so let's see here. So it won't be a problem for you, probably. No, that's not good enough. I want easy difficulty that actually is easy. No probably's about it. Because I think they underestimate how badly I suck at games. Oh, we're gonna get uh, philosophical. Consciousness, the fire in the equations. The nature of consciousness remains deeply mysterious. How can the subjective nature of experience, my inner life, be explained in scientific terms? Does consciousness emerge from complex computations among brain neurons, or is it a fundamental and irreducible property woven into the fabric of the universe? I think when it comes to matters of consciousness, or the mind, as opposed to the brain, we have to be willing to not stick so narrowly to only the discipline of science because science is the study of just of physical reality. So if the mind is a, a non-physical reality, as I believe it is, then science as a discipline is not even equipped because of its self-restricting rules to explore that which is non-physical. Just be yourself. I'll see you after. This guy is my brother. I don't get a brother vibe from him. Oh! Oh! Oh, jeez! Oh, wait a minute. I can save my game? I can save at any time? That's cool. Yeah, there is some real Truman Show stuff going on here. Oh, jeez! There it is. I see it! Ugh. Everyone calls them mimics. Be careful what you pick up. Oh! Alex, so what's what's going on? Oh. Ah. Yeah, I knew that was a trap. Oh! Jeez. Pretty messed up. Oh! Jeez, this music. Yeah, that's what I thought. What? Oh! Oh! Did I get it? Is it dead? Jeez.
All right, let's see what these skill trees look like here. Cool, so the most important thing is I have the ability to increase the effectiveness of healing items and increase my overall health. Those are the first two things I look at when it comes to action-oriented games like this that have RPG elements. And so far on easy, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. So I think I'm going to be able to, just based on this experience so far, make it through this game. Which is cool, because I love the atmosphere so far. I love not knowing what's going on and figuring things out along the way, much like you do when you're playing, you know, a game like Bioshock by investigating the environment. So exploration is rewarded, which is a big deal for me. I love exploring and I love to have a reason to explore. And in this game so far, I'm getting reasons to explore in the form of loot that I'm collecting, which I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet. I guess maybe some crafting or something like that. But then also the, the revelation of the story as I explore. Oh boy. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna go way inside my skull. <laughs> Jeez. Boy, these load screens could stand to be a little bit shorter. What the crap? What the crap? Oh man, this place is not safe. What are all these lemon peels good for? Oh jeez! Oh, I hit you a bunch of times, you're supposed to die! I should probably lure them back this way. Come on, punk! Now turret, shoot! Where is the turret? Oh, it's broken! Who is calling me right now? I don't know you, leave me alone, I'm busy freaking out. Dude, did they break that turret? That's not cool. It's extra freaky right now because of the, because of the headphones. It always makes things more freaky for me. And I remember Bioshock being the same way. I think it'll be less scary for me without headphones. Which is good, because I need it to be less scary for me to enjoy it. But it's not as scary, say, like, as Dead Space or, or even, like, Dead Island. Okay, cool. So they got this whole alternate history thing going on here. In addition to being set in the future, there's also some alternate history stuff. Yeah! Oh, little buggers. Did I hear another one? Or is that just its death throes? See, I think I, once I get used to this, what sounds are attached to what things in the game, how tough the bad guys really are, I think my tension level will start to go down as it did with Bioshock and I'll be able to, while still feeling tense, uh, enjoy the experience more without being like pants-wettingly terrified the whole time. <laughs> Gross. You're gross. What was that sound? Oh, is it a turret maybe? Unless the thing is disguised as this! Oh, a hacking minigame. Man, this is more and more like Bioshock all the time. Oh! Oh, it's all bouncy! <laughs> oh, jeez. So far the game is giving me every reason to kind of suspect what is real and what is not. One thing I noticed in, in like a document that I found was uh, this idea was being expressed that for such and such reason we should be seeing all these kinds of life forms, you know, in our galaxy, da 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 da. Why are we not seeing them? Why haven't they interacted with us yet? Um, and so that question is kind of left unanswered. And then you've got these, these aliens having the ability to kind of mimic other life forms. And during the testing sequence at the beginning, it seemed clear to me that the scientists were expecting me to behave in a certain way that I wasn't behaving in. All that added together, the distrust and all that kind of stuff, that brings with it, you know, all kinds of questions about like, how can we know what's real? How do we know we're not plugged into the matrix? And, you know, we can't objectively know that we're not plugged into the matrix, but really I think we have to operate based on the information we do have, and we are absolutely reasonable to make assumptions based on the information we do have. And it's not really productive to s speculate wildly that certain things are true when there's no actual evidence for those things to be true. Sure, it's possible, but we don't operate based on what is possible. We operate our day-to-day -day lives based on what is plausible what is most plausibly true. It's possible that someone put a bomb in my car and the next time I start it, it's gonna explode me and my two boys. So I should stay away from using my car because that is a possibility. Well, yeah, it's possible, but it's not plausible. 
So I think we are most rational and reasonable to operate based on what is most plausible, based on the information we have. It's fun to speculate in terms of like, you know, sci-fi stories and stuff like that. But when it comes to making life decisions about what we care about, what we believe in, what we're going to choose to do with our lives, I think that's where we have to operate based on what is plausibly, most plausibly true. Yeah, this is so Bioshocky in so many ways. And if it would have come out like right after Bioshock, I'll bet it would totally be criticized for being a Bioshock knockoff, like Singularity was. But it's been years since we've had a Bioshock game, so this is totally welcome. For my taste, it would have been welcome right after I finished Bioshock Infinite. I like the music. It's kind of like a little bit of like retro 80s synth, but with some modern sensibilities and creepy as all get out. Okay, so you got these fabricators that'll make stuff for you. That's what the frickin' lime and banana peels and stuff are for. Well, I really like collecting and looting and stuff like that, so it's definitely looking like it's gonna scratch that itch for me, as well as the exploration itch. So far, I'm really liking this. Through a glass darkly. That's from the Bible. Oh! Oh, jeez, they come back pretty quick! It's interesting, all the apples I find are called Methuselah apples. A shiny and crisp red apple engineered to thrive in conditions aboard Talos 1. So do they name it after the biblical Methuselah, who's the person with the longest recorded lifespan in history? They name it after him because it just kind of stays preserved while it sits around, or because it has qualities that will help preserve and extend your life? Interesting, second biblical reference that I've caught. Oh, what the crap is that? Oh my gosh! Your suit is damaged better condition your suit is in, the more damage it will absorb from enemy attacks hazards. Use a suit repair kit to repair your suit. Alright, let's just rock it! Boom! Alright! Ha ha! I'm pretty sure using that tactic on any difficulty other than easy would have killed me. But since that's the kind of tactic I usually like to roll with, I'll probably be able to get through this game on easy. Where'd he go? Oh! He's a fast little bugger! Oh, they're terraforming Mars. I'm getting more crazy theories about where this game is going. <laughs> oh. Oh, I saw something there. Why are you giving me the crazy music? Where is it? I think I just missed something that was in that room. Yeah, I think I got close enough to trigger some incidental thing that was going on, but I was not looking in the right place, so I didn't even see what the crap happened. That kind of sucks. Oh, crap. These guys are hard to keep track of. Uh, I guess we'll... Tr I guess we'll give it a try. Hopefully it's not corrupted. Oh, nice! Oh, oh, you! I didn't know. Do this. Yeah. Yeah, I got a focus upgrade to make everything kind of go in slow motion when I trigger it during combat. And that helped! <laughs> I'm having fun! Okay, so I've put about three hours or so uh, into the game so far. So in one sense, I feel like I have a sense of the game now. In another sense, I know that I haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes of the upgrades in the skill tree. I haven't even gotten to any of kind of my morphing mimic abilities that I know that you're going to be able to gain in this in this game. That said, uh, I have looked a little bit into kind of what reviewers are saying so far about this game, and in more than one place, it's been commented that the first couple hours can be really difficult, really challenging, really brutal even. I assume they're playing it on normal or higher difficulty. I'm playing it on easy, and the fact that, this, you know, I I'm able to get through the game on easy in those first two hours says to me, okay, I'm going to be able to probably get through and enjoy uh, all of this game. I love the atmosphere, you know, like the feeling of going through a derelict ship, you know, and, and discovering what happened here and uh, just seeing death and the remnants of horrible instances 
all around you. I like the method of storytelling with the audio journal entries and the, uh, the documents left behind. And as much as you could argue that it's overused, I like kind of the amnesia slash, you know, loss of identity scenario because it allows me to kind of just explore the world and gain a sense of who I, who my character is and, and what is going on in the story uh, at the pace that I want. And I remain active through that as opposed to sitting through some cutscenes. I like the different skills that allow you to manipulate the world. And I haven't, like I said, I haven't, I haven't even gotten into the, the morphing stuff yet. But, uh, you know, just like the, the hacking abilities you have to bypass security systems. The skills that increase the effectiveness of your crafting allow you to find more items or make use of more raw materials. You can boost your stealth, you can increase your damage, you can decrease the, or you can increase your, your health. Uh, all these kinds of like things that I that are important to me in a skill tree, and yet you don't advance on the skill tree just through like fighting enemies and gaining experience. You do have to find these Nero mods, so I assume there's a finite amount of Nero mods that you can find, which means that potentially I can't exactly grind my way out of uh, trouble if I if I'm having too much difficulty. That said, I don't think that's going to happen based on my experience so far. It is a tense experience with my headphones on, um, although I'm not jumping every time there's a there's like some kind of a mimic or an enemy and stuff like that so that says to me once i get the headphones off and i'm just playing with my regular speakers that it'll be maybe a, a more tense experience than some other games that i play but it won't be this uh this this kind of fear inducing feeling that actually makes me hesitate to play the game i seem to be adapting to it like i would like i have the bioshock games so all that to say for my sucky skills and my sensitive temperament, it doesn't look like it's going to be too hard uh, or too tense and freaky the whole time. There's plenty of time spent just exploring the environment. You know, it's not just this like it's not a not a survival horror type game at all. I mean, my guess is if you're a Bioshock fan, that this would be like an insta purchase for you. It just has that much in common with the gameplay of Bioshock in my experience. I'm interested philosophically where they're going to go. They're talking about these basic issues of human identity, human consciousness, what makes us who we are, and you can follow that kind of track in an AI type story uh, or in a story that's about mem you know memory loss or memory fabrication. And I think the, the answer to that question largely does depend on your willingness to allow for a non-physical component to who we essentially are as human beings. And like I said before, I think it uh, may also get into those philosophical questions of how can we know uh, when something is real or what is real or what is true. And then of course, in, in a fictional world like this where you have reason to think that reality itself is an illusion, you know, then I think you're right to, to, to ask those kind of questions and take them very seriously. But as I said, in our lives, apart from some evidence that we are actually living in like a simulation, uh, I don't think it's, uh, you know, more than fanciful to really take your mind in that direction when considering the possibilities of what is really real. I think that's where we kind of have to set aside what is possible because that's just an endless amount of rabbit trails and instead zero in on what is most plausible. Really enjoying my time with this game so far just from the, the gameplay alone is totally my thing, the atmosphere totally my thing, and the, the philosophical issues that they're injecting into it, again, totally my thing. So I think I'm going to have a great time with this game. My hope is that it, that it will do well, and what once might have been considered a Bioshock ripoff will kind of become a popular new thing. Incidentally, if you've never checked out the game Singularity and you're a Bioshock fan, you ought to check out Singularity. Great game. But yeah, I would love to see a ton more Singularities, a ton more praise, uh, a ton more games that are inspired by System Shock, even I've never played that. Apparently it results in games that feel very inspired by Bioshock. So I'd love all that kind of stuff. I'd also love to get your thoughts in the comments below. Have you played this game? Are you planning on playing it? What do you think about it? What do you think about some of those deeper issues of like what makes us who we are? Are we just the sum of our memories? How can we know with any reasonable confidence that we are not plugged into the matrix? You know, whatever you guys want to talk about, um, I'm probably game for. So go ahead and put your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Then I hope you'll join us sometime soon at ChristianGeekCentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. I'm not